Praise God. Praise God. Welcome. Good evening. Welcome here to New Life Christian Center. Go get your Bibles. Go get you some Reese's, some Pepsi. Sit on down. Take some notes. Pen, paper. We finna get ready and get off into the Word of God tonight. God just opened up a great revelation to us just a couple of minutes ago. And I'm going to show it to you all right now before we get off into our teaching tonight. But uh, it, it's going to be encouraging to you because remember this. God's word works. If we work it, it's going to work. It's going to prevail. It's not some other, it's not some kind of magic formula. It's not some kind of worldly formula. It's the word of God. So, with that being said, I want you all to turn your Bible to the book of Acts. Turn your Bible to the book of Acts. Turn your Bible to the book of Acts. What was it at? <laughs> I was just reading it. Now I'm just playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Acts chapter 7. 8. 8. Thank you. Forgive me. Acts chapter 7. 8. I'm thinking. I'm, it's something in 7 that I need to be looking at. And I was thinking 7 a few minutes ago as well. Eight. Acts chapter 8. Verse 4. Just look at verse 4. It says this. Therefore. They that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. It would do you some justice to go back and read. I know I'm coming on a minute of a sentence here, but it do you some justice to go and read the chapter, and, and uh, actually chapter seven and chapter eight, because it's the whole storyline about it. But it's all the people <clears throat> right after Jesus' birth, right after Jesus went on back to the Father. And all the people were starting to gather together. The Holy Spirit had just came on the people. And they had all flocked up. And they was all having, uh, uh, what, what, what we call it, an emotional celebration. <laughs> and as soon as nobody went out preaching the word and the one was going out doing the word, Satan threw a big monkey wrench in the whole thing. And, and beyond what you doubt, one of the best monkey riches ever thrown off into the body of Christ. Because it made the people get up and go do what the word says. <laughs> and they went preaching. They went everywhere preaching the word. Now I want you to turn to Acts chapter 17, verse 30. Look what it says. Verse 30 says, Acts 17, verse 30, it says this. And the times... Of this ignorance. Ignorance means not knowing. God winked at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Why? Why did God put that commandment? Everybody got to change. Because it's time to get up and do the word. Some of us, we sit around and we get the word. And we go to church. And we hear good messages. But then when it, once the church service is over with. And it's time to go home. We won't do it. <laughs> Bible say don't commit adultery. We go right off. We leave right out the church to go commit adultery right across the street. Bible say don't go out cussing nobody out, and then we go right out. We be on the church ground, and we cuss folk out. <laughs> it said in the times of this ignorance, this ignorance that means the state of mind that you're not knowing. It's time to get up and go do the word. Okay, look at verse 19. Acts chapter 19. I want you to look at what it says right here. Coming on the middle of a sentence again. Take it, go, go back and read it yourself. Verse 20 says this. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. That means victory. You have to get up and do the word. You get the word. You hear the word. You receive faith. You confess it. And then you get up and you do it. You hear the word. You sit down in church. You hear the word. You go home. And then you you read the Bible yourself. Sitting on your couch in your chair. Your recliner. Wherever it is you sit. Or lay down in the bed. Read the Bible. You, 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 you say it loud enough just for you to hear. Because faith comes by hearing. You read the Bible. Read the Bible. Faith comes by hearing. And then you get up and then you go do it. You go do it. And the Bible says when you do that, the word will prevail. 
from under any circumstances, if you operate on God's word, the word of God will work. It works. It's, it works. It works. Why am I stressing that? Because when you are operating in the word of God, and Satan comes in your brain to try to get you to go off into sin, commit sin against God, or start judging people's thoughts and flaws, and, and look and down, 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 try and that's disobeying God. When he try to get you to disobey God, or when God told you something that something's going to happen, you believe it. You believe with all your heart, and it's lined up with the Word of God. It's in obedience to God's word. And God told you something. And Satan is trying to get you to doubt it. That's when you know that the word is working. Man, that's good. Yeah. Why do you know it? Satan? It might happen tomorrow. It might happen next month. It might happen next year. Or even ten years from now. But if you keep obeying God's word, the thing you've been believing for, the thing you've been confessing, the thing you've been working toward, it's going to happen. Why? Because what did Jesus say in Mark 11, verse 20, uh, Mark 11, verse 24? He said, if you say in your heart, the thing, now let's just go read it. Let's go read it. We got time. Bless God. Mark chapter 11. Oh, uh, because I know what I know what I'm saying. I'm kind of excited. I need to slow down a little bit. Mark 11. I've been beating this scripture up in my brain, man. Yeah. I've been beating it up. And well, look what God, Jesus said right here, Mark 11, Mark 11, verse 20, Mark 11, verse 22. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. The thing you've been believing for, the thing you've been confessing, you've been saying, debt, get out my way. F uh, financial blessing, come forth. Money cometh to me now. Now, I'm going to have a great marriage. I'm going to have a great husband. I'm going to have a great wife. My children are going to be in obedience. I'm going to have the job that's going to pay me the money that's going to meet my needs. Uh, the people that I've been believing for, they're going to come and they're going to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'll be, you keep confessing, and you keep confessing, and you keep confessing, and then you keep, and then you thank God. Thank you, Father God, that is coming to pass. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe it. And guess what Satan going to do? He going to get in your head and he going to try to make you doubt it. Why? Because look what Jesus says. If you believe your heart and confess with your mouth and shall not doubt in your heart, the moment you start doubting it, Satan says, oh, if I could just get them to doubt it. If he can get you to doubt it, it ain't going to happen. Because Jesus said, if you said, you told the mountain to move, be cast, thou cast to the sea, you say, you didn't say it. The mountain is, 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 Jesus was really, really talking about a real mountain just because y'all did not know that. But the mountain in your life, it could be financial blessing, breakthrough. It could be that child or a loved one that you've been believing God, a, a lead, that, that'll get born again, get baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. Or that spouse that you've been believing to get baptized through the Holy Spirit or get saved. Come on, people. We got to. God, Jesus said, look what he said. It's going to happen as long as you, you keep saying it and you don't doubt. You said, if you, this the thing that you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast to the sea and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which what? You say it. Yeah, the thing that you continuously keep on saying. The thing that you continuously keep on saying. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Woo -hoo -hoo. Why? Because if Satan can get you to doubt it. As soon as he gets you to doubt it. As soon as he gets you to doubt it. It won't happen. Why? Because he don't care. Oh, and it said in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 2, Jesus says, some people do not even know the depths, D-E-P-T-H-S, the depths of Satan, how far Satan to go to get you to doubt God's word. 
to get you to not believe God's word. We'll sit in church or we'll sit somewhere and we'll get the word all day. But then when it's time to get up and go do it, that's the sad part of it. Then you find, Lord, Father, God, show me what I need to do. The thing that I'm, the thing that I'm confessing, show me what I need to do. If God say nothing, I'm taking care of this right now. Then you don't do nothing. Because then that's God's part. But whatever God tell you to do, that's what you do. Oh, glory. Why? Because if he say can get you to doubt, it won't happen. So, like I said already, if Satan is getting you, trying to get you to doubt it, that means the word of God is working. <laughs> it's working, people. It's working. If Satan is trying to get you to doubt what's going to happen, that means it's working. Ooh, I keep saying it. I keep saying I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. It's going to happen. Father, Father God, I believe by your stripes I am healed. No, this stuff don't work. I know it's working now because you're trying to get me to doubt it. Oh, man. No, I believe. I believe I have strength. I believe I have energy. I believe I have this. I confess that no money, no people are looking for me to supernaturally bless me. People are going to be giving to my bosom good measure, press down, shaking together, and run. I believe that with all my heart. 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 And Satan said, that ain't going to work. Oh, Lord Jesus, I know it's working now. Why? Because Satan trying to get you to die. Glory to God. If you, and then what did Jesus say in verse 24? Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. He says if you've been pray, prayed about it, and you've already asked the Father for it, and you've told the mountain to move and get out your way, and you've told whatever to come forth, that's one thing you told it to come forth. No, financial blessing come forth. Job come forth. Career come forth. Salvation is already here, but my child will receive something. My spouse will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. My spouse will get born again. My spouse will start living a holy lifestyle. Oh, no, I don't think I'm talking about me, but you, so you might be confessing that out there. You keep confessing it. You keep confessing it. And Satan said, oh, this stuff don't work. This stuff don't work. That's, let you, that's evidence that lets you know that it's working. Because Satan is trying to get you to doubt it. Oh, man, that's good. That's some good stuff right there, man. That's some good stuff right there. God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. God loves you, and He's made it all. He made it all available in His Word. But you got to believe it, beloved, because He loves you. He loves you, and you don't doubt it. You don't doubt it. You keep confessing it. You meditate on it all day long. I didn't say worry. I, you need to worry what God's Word says. I ain't say worry, no problem. You ain't got to do, you worry the word. That means meditate the word. You keep no Father God, I thank you. Satan, tell Satan, Satan, you a lie. That's why you're going to burn in the lake of fire. God is unctioning me wherever I go. In the name of Jesus, the angels are camped around about me to protect me. North, south, east, and west. Even in the northwest, southwest, east, west. North, south, southeast, wherever I go, wherever my foot trudges, God is protecting me because the angels are around about me. Angels go on now in the name of Jesus and bring back my prosperity. Oh, Father God, turn the person's heart that's supposed to be turned that's going to supernaturally touch our lives. And I thank you, Father God, and I'm calling it so in the name of Jesus. Say you cannot have this family. If you got to, go in the bathroom and, and clutch shut the door and just go in there and whack Satan all upside his head if you don't want nobody to think you're crazy. But I don't give a flying care. Say naked people can think I'm crazy because when the blessing starts to come and when it's happening and when it's showing up in my life, the first thing that they're going to say is, God show love you. No, you're right. He, no, he don't get love me. He love you too. You just want to put the forth the action to get up and go do it. I love you. Praise God. The word of God works. What does it say? And the word, and the word prevailed. God has made you more than a conqueror. 
He's made you more than a conqueror. God has made you more than a conqueror. He's made you more than a conqueror. But you got to keep confessing the word. You got to keep confessing the word. You got to keep confessing the word. You got to keep telling Satan, get out of my head in the name of Jesus. No, Satan, I will not sleep with that woman that I'm not married to. No, I will not smoke that dope or that cigarette. I won't drink none of that stuff. And I'm going to walk in love. You keep busting him upside there. And then you keep loving the people. And every time you think you get tired, go in the bathroom and worship God. Pray in tongues. And then come on out and then you walk in love some more. Praise God. And then guess what? God says it's going to happen. Because God's word don't know how to do nothing else but become victorious. That's all it knows. That's all God's word knows how to do is walk in victory. It ain't God's word has not seen a day in ever, <laughs> a day in ever where it lost a battle. Oh, glory to God. Think about that. However many battles God has ever been in, God is whatever that number and oh, the enemy ain't got not a near victory. Have you, you ever, you know, it's like a baseball game when, you know, when they, they, uh, the dude go pitch a perfect game or he pitch a shutout. And, you know, the pitcher be out there throwing that ball, wham, throwing that ball, wham. And now, now one batter can get a lick off it, get a hit off him at all. And he, he should put a goose egg up on the team. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Now, a football team, it ain't never happened in basketball, but I would have, I would love to see it in basketball. Somebody out there shooting, and they, they just shut the whole other team down. It'd be 101 to nothing. <laughs> that would be awesome, ma'am. It's happened in football games a whole bunch where the team has scored 26 points and they have shut the other team just out. Team don't score no points. Satan ain't, he ain't scored not a nail one point yet. Nope. Oh, 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 glory. You don't doubt in your heart, man. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. You keep confessing God's word. You keep confessing God's word and then you will have your victory. And then you'll say, glory to the Father. Glory to God. Praise God. Thank you. Why? Because you walked it out. And you walked it out. And you got that trophy. You won the Super Bowl. You won the NBA championship. There's, uh, there's, you got to the Stanley Cup Finals and you won it. Man, you got to the World Series and you won it. You went to the World Cup of soccer and you won that cup and you brought it back home to your country. Man, you won it and can't nobody take that from you when you win that victory and you lift your hands up to the Father. That's why Abraham said, no man can say that he has made me rich but God. Glory, man. Glory. Glory to the Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That's good, man. You keep walking it out. You keep confessing it. And you don't doubt. Don't give Satan the pleasure of doubt. Don't give him nothing. He don't deserve it. Glory to the Father. I'm glad I came to church tonight, man. That was good stuff right there. Don't let Satan beat you in your head. You keep confessing God's word. Glory to the Father. Man! I'm excited. I'm excited. Glory, glory. That's good, man. That's good. You, you, you get in God's word. And people look at you and say, why, why, you, why don't you cuss? Because I'm working on something, man. I'm not cussing because I'm working on something. I got, I got family members. I got bills need to be paid. I ain't got time to be cussing nobody out. And throwing a monkey wrench off in my my my, my program when I I've been believing God and I'm gonna go cut somebody out because they made me mad. What? No, I'm throwing monkey wrench into my own plans for real. <laughs> you tripping, man? That's like my car. I gotta go to work tomorrow morning. I gotta go to work. I know if I put oil in the engine, I'll be fine. But if I go out there and get the water hose and turn the water hose onto my engine and put it right off inside of where the oil go. And they think, oh, I'm going to go to work tomorrow. He ain't going nowhere. I'm going, I'm going to be walking. <laughs> that's, that's a fool. Throw a monkey wrench off into my own place. God says, do not commit adultery. 
I go out and see some fine girl. I'm doubting God. I ain't got time to be throwing monkey wrenches off into my program. Me and God working on something. And I'm going to mess it all up by going out to commit the adultery. Really? No, I ain't got time for that. Glory to God. Man, I, I'm my wife. Shoot. I feel like I'm 20 feet tall now. Woo. Man, that's good. That's good, man. Got time. Satan is trying to get you down. What is it God told me or for me to go? What, what he spoke to us? Read that again. I don't even know what it was. Praise Thank God. You there you go. There you go. As soon as she said, that's why I had to write it down. I ain't want to lose that one. If Satan can keep you confused and confusion, if he can keep you confused, he keeps you from the truth. If he, that's why so many different things that's going on out there, so many different philosophies and so many different religions and so many different this, and it's keeping you from the word of God. He's trying to keep you from the word of God. Trying to keep people out there trying to figure out, well, I don't really know what's the truth. And I really don't know what this. And so they just stand and say, I just don't want to deal with none of it. And I just leave it. I cast it, put all of it into one big pot. And I won't have to deal with none of it. Why? Because he got you confused. He got all that different type of stuff out there. He got you confused. And it's keeping you from the truth. Jesus said that my word, let's go read that. Go on to the book of 3rd uh, John. Go to the book of 3rd John. <clears throat> Watch this. Watch this. Man, it's good, man. It's good. It's good. 3rd John. 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John. Look at verse 1. It's only one chapter. <laughs> Look what it says there. Verse 1. The elder unto the well-beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Now, this is John talking to Gaius, okay? He said, whom I love in the truth. Watch this. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul, thy soul prospereth. That's God's, that's what God wants for you. That's what God wants for you. That's what God wants for you. That's what God wants for you out there. That's what God, God wants you to prosper. Now, he says, even as your what? Soul. That means your intellect. S-O-U-L. Not your spirit, man. Your soul prospers. Your born-again spirit, he knows the Bible front to back, back to front. He knows every little intricate details about it. But you need to feed your mind the Word of God. As your soul grabs hold to different truths of the Word of God. And it begins to prosper and understand how is your soul prospering? How you know that your soul is prospering? Because you're doing it. You get up and doing the Word. But look what it says. For I rejoice greatly. I personally believe this is the Spirit of God speaking through John in this verse. Now you can take it up and toss it up if you want to. Look what God is saying. If, 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 if what I just said is really, really true, look at God's yeah. attitude. God says, for I rejoiced greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you, thee, even as thou or you walkest, walk, that means you live in the truth. The truth, remember, the truth cannot be changed. You live in it. You live in it. You live in it. Those are the ones that God wants to prosper. The ones that continuously walk in the truth. Look what it says. Verse 4. For I have no greater joy. Here you go. This is how I know this is coming directly from God. For I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. They live in it. They live in, I'm not going to go commit adultery. I'm going to pay tithes. I'm going to live righteous. I'm righteous from within. I'm not trying to become, I'm not doing righteous to become righteous. I am righteous, so I'm going to just do it. Amen. Man, that's good, man. <laughs> and if Satan can get you to doubt it, what you've been, what God promised you, 
whatever God promised you, it ain't going to happen. Because you doubt not. God says, I want you to prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Glory to God, man. That's the will of God right there. Man, that's good. What do what the world we've been doing, people? I won't even tell no going on this far, but I didn't preach myself happy, and God is just flowing through this, man. Y'all need to get this. Do not doubt. You keep confessing him. If you got to get crazy in front of folk and walking around through the house and at, on your job, no, Satan, you are lying in the name of Jesus. You know, you have you ever chastised yourself? Satan put some stuff in your head and you didn't realize you received it? No, in the name of Jesus. No, I ain't going to receive that. Get out of my head. No, flesh, you cannot have it. You're like, what's wrong with you? I'm chastising myself. If I, well, well, if I get chastised by God, then I'll lose my reward. At least if I chastise myself, I get back on track, back on track. <laughs> to, to, to keep, keep pursuing my reward. Chastise me. Ch ch me. I'm chastised me. Why? Because God said, Jesus, what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? He said, if you don't doubt in your heart. Say that again. If Satan can keep you in confusion. It keeps you from the truth. The truth of what God is saying and it won't happen in your life. Whatever God, that truth that God said, it's going to happen. But you got to keep confessing it. You got to keep believing and no doubt. Do not doubt. You, you cast out doubt. How do you cast out doubt? With the word of God. No, God said. I believe God said. God said, whatever God said to you, no, God said. And you got to get bold with it. God said. God said. No, no, you a lie, Satan. God said. You a lie, do not receive it. God said that we will minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to people around the world, faithfully, holy, and holy. We will teach them, and we're going to show them how to do it, faithfully, holy, and holy. We're going to teach them and show them how to do it. No, Satan, you a lie. People are going to come from the north, south, east, and the west to hear the gospel of the truth. They're going to hear it, and they're going to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. They're going to learn how to live a righteous lifestyle, and they're going to learn how to call those things that be not as though they were. They're going to learn how to totally rely upon God, and they're going to become faith walkers, and they're going to become holy walkers, and they're going to become Bible-toting, card-carrying, tongue-talking Christians. In the name of Jesus, and Satan, you can't do nothing about it because you're going to end up in the lake of fire, and we're going to loud laugh at you. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. And get bold with it. Don't, no, do not doubt. Do not doubt. Do not doubt. That is, that is a key. Do not doubt it. Oh, man. Do not doubt it, people. Do y'all hear me out there, you two? Don't turn that channel. Do not doubt the word of God. It will prevail. And don't go back to the old system. The old way of thinking. Well, I, it don't look like it's working. Yeah, that, you are not Satan got you. Now, he got you in doubt. Well, I don't think it's working. I've been out there for six months and ain't nothing happened yet. No, you don't doubt. You don't doubt. You don't doubt. Even if it take ten years, people, you don't doubt because it's going to happen. Man, I gotta, can't stress that no more. You don't doubt. Mark 11, 24, you quote that every day and then you keep confessing, no, my, the money coming forth. No, the money coming forth. The money coming forth. Then you get up and then you go do the word. You lead somebody to Jesus Christ. You pay your tithe. You give. As God tells you to give, that's how you give. And you don't doubt. Amen. But, oh, if I can just open your brain up and just pour it in your head so you can just get it. <laughs> <laughs> Please, man. Please, you don't doubt it. Well, I don't know how to handle pressure. I got to smoke these cigarettes. Man, no, you confess the word and you speak in tongues. I, you, you receive the Holy Spirit so you can speak in tongues. And I guarantee the pressure will be, will be gone. And you don't need to go smoke the cancer stick. I'm telling you, you're throwing a monkey wrench in your program. You don't have to do it. 
God has been dealing with me more and more and more and more about flaws and faults. Show me the difference between flaws and faults. And guess what? One of the major flaws that will stop you from receiving God's word is doubt. Even said in his word in the book of Hebrews, he says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, because it has great recompense. It has a great reward attached to it. Doubting. Don't doubt. That's a, it's, I, and, 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 and now that I understand this now, it's sin to me to doubt. It becomes sin to me. What does the Bible say in the book of Timothy? Therefore, if you know to do good and you don't do it, it's sin to you. It's a sin to me not to doubt. Now, it may not be a sin to you, but it's a sin to me to doubt. It's still a flaw in probably in some of your eyes, but it's a sin to me. I refuse. Oh, Lord, Jesus, the more I talk about it, I'm talking about it. I'm getting all these revelations through it, too, Lord. I got I to gotta go back and watch this tape again myself. Glory to God. Man, I'm not doubting from this day forward. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not, we was going to go in the book of 1 John tonight. But we there already. I'm not going to doubt. I'm not. Doubting is not an option anymore. What the Spirit of God just showed me? He just showed it to me. Go to the book of Revelation. Go to the book of Revelation. Lord Jesus, he don't know we need we need to bust this down out the door, man. Get out. Get out. No more doubting. No more doubting. Lord Jesus, no more doubting. We will not doubt. We will not doubt. Glory to the Father. Glory to the Father. Where is that at? Where is that at? I know he's, the Spirit of God just showed to me. The book of Revelation. He just said, Where is that at? For those of y'all who have not said, He says, uh, Glory to the Father. The book of Revelation. He says, Turn your Bible to. Revelation chapter 20. <clears throat> no more doubting, people. No more doubting. No more doubting. Doubting got to go. Doubting is gone. Henceforth, in me, in me and my household, doubting is gone. Chapter 21, I'm sorry. Verse 7. Look what it says. Now there, look what it says. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Woo! And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. That's that talking about Jesus, just because y'all did not know that. He's talking about anybody who believes. He said, he that overcometh. Look what it said, verse 8. But he, but the fearful, and what? Unbelieving, and abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Let's just deal with the, the word we just dealt The fearful and unbelieving. That's doubters. I don't believe nothing. Doubting. You go, if you doubt, you're going to have Jesus said that one flaw to, to doubt. It's going to have, it could keep, end up getting you into the lake of fire. You can end up in the lake of fire, in hell, burning with Satan. Go back on, look at, look, look at Revelation. You, you there, Revelation. Look, look at Revelation chapter 20. Look at verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Cast. Satan. It's such, 
Oh. Hell is not Satan's. He don't have a seat in hell where he's controlling everything. <laughs> And running the show where he's the where he's the H N I C of hell. No, he gonna be cast in the hell too. Yep. Get in there, and I'm looking forward to that to seeing that. That's gonna be an awesome fight, man. He gonna try to fight, ain't gonna lose. He gonna try to throw a punch, and ain't gonna and ain't gonna connect to nothing. And he gonna get cast off into Lake of Fire. Cast. Get in there, throw it in there. They gonna. I'm, I, I I believe. God himself is going to strike him down. But I believe Michael is the one going to grab Satan and going to toss him over in there. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to laugh. I'm going to laugh. Man, I'm going to laugh. He cast into the lake of fire. Watch this. Which burneth with fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be what? Tormented. Day and night. Forever and ever. Satan gonna be in torment. Don't let him make you think that he ain't gonna be in torment. Satan gonna be thrown over there. Yeah. And everybody who doubt, all the doubters gonna get tossed over in there too. Doubt I? No, doubt is gone. Gee, I'm gonna doubt is gone. Doubting is gone out of my house. From this day forward, I will not let doubt. No, I doubt that. No, I doubt that. Y'all ever made that statement? No, I doubt that. No, I ain't up. I rebuke that statement out of my mouth. And if I y'all hear me say it, anyone of y'all ever hear me say it again, tell me, oh, then you then you the one preached it. You right. No more doubting. Gone. 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 I will not doubt God's word ever again. Because it's the key to me receiving the thing that I've been believing for. Man, I got that in the revelation tonight, Father. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing that to us tonight. I was not planning on going down that road, but I'm glad we did. Because we needed to hear this. We needed to hear it. No more doubt. No more doubt. If we got to get strong, what, 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 how the world will say, get stupid bold. <laughs> You just took going a little too far. You doggone right because I understand what God's word says. I got it. No more doubting. And the whole woe is me. I don't know what we're going to do. Then what we're going to do. By Jesus Christ we heal. All I need shall be Michelle. Period. That means that's just like uh, what well, shall. That's just like uh, what, what, what's it called? It's like a guarantee written on a box. I'm going to give you your money back if this don't work. God don't have to give a guarantee. He just says it's going to work. Yep. <laughs> oh, man, that's good. God, do not get caught up in confusion. You get caught up in confusion, it's going to work. It'll keep you in doubt. And it'll keep you from the truth. God says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. If you call it, it's going to happen. If you call it, you hear me, sister? If you call it, it's going to happen. You hear me, brother? If you call it, it's going to happen. You keep confessing it, and you don't let Satan play with your brain. What did Revelation we got the other day? <clears throat> Satan will rise up in your voice. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians, Satan, uh, he comes as an angel of light. And, and he, said, he said, marvel not that even his ministers will be transformed into angels of light. His minister, which is of demonic spirits, they'll come and they'll look like a fine girl in front of you. Look like some dude just so, uh, he just, he came straight off the showroom floor. <laughs> I mean, and he, he so, and he, all of a sudden, he'd come with wisdom that you never even heard of. And some smooth talking, and this girl would come with some great deal that you just can't pass up. And guess what? It'd jump in your head, and the voice would sound just like you. And if you don't know what God's word says, you'll be tricked. You'll be deceived. No more doubt. No more doubt. Don't even let that voice that sound like you, you judge your own thoughts and say, okay, that voice sounded like me. Does the word of God back that up? 
not what I thought the word of God said. A lot of us get that confused too. Does the word of God back that up? So now you got to be reading the Bible too. Now you gotta have you gotta okay, well no, the Bible don't say that. So that's Satan. Don't receive it. You kick it out. Don't kick it out. No, Satan, you a lie. That's not of God. Glory to the Father. I'm gonna stay with what God's word says. Y'all should have been here tonight, man. But I believe that the anointing that you heard tonight is just as much on the tape. As, as it is here in this place. And if you take what the word of God has said tonight, God's word will prevail under any circumstances, in any situation, on any different thing, obstacle that you have in your life. If you take it and you apply it to your life and you apply it to the situation of your life, I guarantee, double dog on to you, it's going to happen. I'm Pastor Ivory. New Life Chris Center, come on out here every Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, every Sunday morning, 9 a.m., clock time, so that we can show you and teach you how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. No more doubting, people. Get doubting out your house. I'll see y'all next time.